In every town, in every country, in every culture, the tallest object, structure, or tree always takes on a significance greater than its physical dimensions. It becomes a meeting place, a beacon, an iconic symbol of the people who live in its shadow. So when that icon is harmed or destroyed, the damage, too, goes far beyond the structure itself. The wound is shared by individuals, by families, by the entire society. The amazing thing about the World Trade Center is that it was two of them, and it was big, and it was brash, and it was at a scale that almost said, that's who we are in a way. That's who we are in a way. It was a symbol of our way of life. It was a symbol of our success. It was a symbol of our culture. They could have selected any building, any site, anywhere in this country. That was the one they selected. The effect of September 11 was on the psyche of our entire country. And I remember when the towers came down, I brought my son back and he started to cry. And I said, Greg, why are you crying? He said, Dad, we lost our home. It's the only place I worked. I worked there until 2001. It was my home, away from home. One day I came to work and that day my house disappeared. And not only that, I lost lots of people that work for me and lots of other friends. And that's why people are passionate about rebuilding. We're not doing this for myself, I'm doing it for them. The World Trade Center site will be the most visible sign of what resurgence can mean and building off of tragedy. Each part of the project had its own vision and its own monumental vision. It demonstrates how we deal with adversity. We're going to use this as an opportunity to rethink what we do and how we do it and whether we can do it better. When faced with tragedy, people mourn not only what has been lost, but search for meaning to guide their future. Where do we go from here? A resilient society picks itself up, moves forward in the wake of a loss, and overcomes adversity by growing stronger and wiser. But first, we honor those who have fallen by strengthening our commitment to our ideals. Where the original towers were was considered hallowed ground by so many of the families who never got anybody back that they could bury in a grave. So the memorial consists of two reflecting pools that sit in the footprints of where the original towers were. You stand next to them, the sound of the falling water, the size, the void, and that sense of space that was lost. If it doesn't take your breath away, I'm not sure what will. The pools provide a very serene place lined with the names of those souls who were lost that day. The nameplates have been cut right through, so they're backlit, so you can see them at night standing out. But you can actually take a piece of paper and do a tracing like you would, let's say, on the Vietnam Memorial in Washington. Below that, the actual museum. And I can picture all these yellow school buses coming down, and they're being told about some event that they never witnessed. And that's why it has to tell a story for those who are not yet born. It's about the souls, individual souls, and what they meant to the world and what they meant to their family. This memorial will take its place with Gettysburg, with the Great Mall in Washington, whether it's Vietnam or World War II or Korea. It'll be the conscience. It'll be the spiritual center around whatever 9-11 represents for everyone in this country and in the world. Resilience means regaining our footing reaffirming relationships, and recapturing the vitality of industry, commerce, and our way of life. It requires hard work. It requires vision. 
Carlo Traver himself is, is brilliant. He's a modern day Leonardo da Vinci, he really is. His structures thought very simplistically, he likes to draw. So he'll sit there and draw a human form or an animal form and convert it. So if you look at the oculus, that's a bird preparing to go into flight. Down below into the grass hall, you see what looks like ribs with a sternum, and it gives you a sense of nurturing in the womb. You're talking about one of America's most unique public environments. It's going to be remarkable. The lower Manhattan version of Grand Central, same size, same function, interconnects 13 different subway lines, but also a connection between New York and New Jersey. Not only subway lines, but ferry service and bus service, they all convene at the World Trade Center site. This is going to be much more than just a terminal. It's going to have a lot of life. It's going to have a lot of retail activity. That's one of the things that resiliency is all about. Get back up and restore and, and, and get back to where you were before. And the entire site's built with that whole mission in mind. How to rise up, learn from the past, think in new ways and ensure that going forward, life will be safer and more fulfilling. This site is like the epicenter of getting the mix of security with commercial viability, aesthetics, lifestyle. We had to evolve systems, solutions, answers of how to keep a place open, public, inviting, or importantly, functioning in the way it was intended, yet safe. We call it baked in into the site as opposed to, oh, now we have to do security. Now we've got to figure out how to make the place safe. No, that's all part of the initial design work. We poured 18,000 pounds per square inch concrete for blast strength resistance. Rebar the size of my wrist, windows, like you'd have in the front windshield of your car. But people aren't going to see that. They're going to see a light, bright, airy, glass piece of art. They won't see armaments and steel, they're gonna see art. It has thrust and sort of turn to it. It picks up not only the sight, but the changing moods of the sky and the clouds reflecting it. The tallest skyscraper in New York, and probably the safest skyscraper in the world. We've learned and you know, we've made ourselves better, so history doesn't repeat itself. This is the skyscraper reinvented. The rise upwards can be difficult. Obstacles will surely come. But a resilient society knows what's possible thanks to the passion and courage of the people who are determined to be healed. People really are building this with their heart and soul. What they're doing is showing the world what America can do, how we can rebuild and overcome it is critical that we rebuild the symbol. It extends beyond New York City. It's national and international, and we've got to get it right. That is the healthy comeback. And ultimately, that is probably the greatest testament to those that lost their lives on 9-11. The public wants it. My family wants it. It's healing that wound in people's hearts. As the beams rise, our spirit follows. Past and future embracing in the rebirth of this site.